Okay, so uh, yeah, welcome to the last uh, last talk of the afternoon. Um, made it this far, so we'll um, we'll carry on with the with the talk. The uh, the talk, as you can see, is is, is GNU module state module two status, whole program optimization, and language interoperability. Uh, interoperability, and obviously I'm Gaius Mully, and you can see my email address there. Okay, so why module two um, today? Um, I guess in 2016 is it. Well, because um, I guess there is a lot of, lot of legacy code out there, and, and uh, as Mike Garant s said um, only in one of his books, source code that cannot port to another architecture will die. Um, a lot, there's a lot of academics out there which have code, and there's a lot of indus industrialists also who have code from obviously the 80s, I suppose, 70s and 80s, and, um, and, and maybe 90s, but the, there is a, a, code, a, lot of, a big code, ba code base. So one, of the, one of the people I'm um, in contact with, they have... Uh, well, this institution has three quarters of a million lines of code in Modular 2. So there's not going to, you know, you, you, there's, a, there's a lifetime or, and, and or so to retranslate that into whatever your favorite language is at the time. Um, and so there, there, is, there is that issue. And there's other, that's a, one, one institution. Another institution, uh, another company has, a, has code that, 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 that which they're uh, using in, the, in, in Hollywood, uh, well, in aspect of Hollywood, ray tracing software. And, uh, and that's using, um, you know, Code which was written, I guess, some time ago, but it's just still it's still modular two. Actually, that's rather interesting because they're, they're still using uh, GNU modular two with with GCC four point one point two, and they've kind of frozen a release of for Linux and they're, they're shipping it with that. And it's running twenty four seven. So, you know, there is there is this need for legacy stuff, and obviously, uh, four point seven point four is the GCC which the current stable GNU modular two. Um, graphs onto, but 4.1.2 is very stable and, and it's still used. So there is legacy code, the, um, et cetera, and also I guess it, it kind of it, there's a rein, reinvention of maybe of, of, uh, of coding techniques really with, with the embedded systems. We have uh, the, the freebie that came this morning. We see that, that maybe has a tiny amount of RAM. I didn't, didn't see the, the processor type on it, but um, a tiny, tiny bit of RAM and so, suddenly the, these, these issues are of chew shoehorning code into small smart space is very important, as you, you, you all well know, I'm sure. Um, it's also a great teaching language. If this can get fired, this is almost like a religious war here, isn't it? But I mean, uh, and, and the, 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 the current vogue is C++ um, in academia, um, and much to, much to my uh, dismay, really. But I mean, I'm, I'm one, of the, one of the few that, that, that still believes in Module 2, but that there's, there, are, there are a number of people um, who think this is a great teaching language. I, um, David Grease, I think, would also um, agree, and Nicholas Wirth, et cetera, who, who's probably using Oberon, et cetera, well, was using Oberon, but, but suddenly th these th there is, a, there is a, uh, a, a small section of academics who believe that small is beautiful, and, and especially for teaching, first year, first year programming languages. Um, but anyway, that's a kind of a war that one can fight, and, and, and I mean, the, the, the percentage would say that we, you know, it's lost, but nevertheless, I think it's still, it is, it is still great. Um, obviously, th this, this is a um, embedded target from, from a probably a decade ago now, um, an at mega chip, um, which, um, yeah, uh, uh, this, this one has an is a at mega 3 to 8p, the Arduino chip, basically, isn't, isn't it? Um, which, which has 32k of RAM, uh, sorry, 32k of ROM, beg your pardon, and 2k of RAM. So, so suddenly, you know, we're, we're targeting tiny bits of, um, bits of silicon and with, with, with very constrained um, memory. <laughs> So um, yeah, GNU module two. It supports um, PIM two, PIM three, PIM four, and ISO module two. I was going to bring my. I brought them to the to Halifax. I didn't dare bring them to uh, along the train and, and walking with them. I think they turned to papier mâché. But I brought my uh, PIM th two, three, and four books um, and uh, the ISO standard. Well, the PIM two, three, and four books. I suspect anybody was not, was anybody here an undergrad in the eighties um, and late seventies and eighties who'd use modular two. I can certainly, uh, there's a few, a few of us, anyway. Uh, you would have come across the, the PIM, the silver book, maybe with, with, uh, with orange writing and probing module two. And anyway, that, that's, I think, 145 pages long. I checked it last night, 145 pages. And, and about 25 pages at the end was the, 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 the language report. And so if you give me, it, it typically, for, I guess, for students, um, you, you, in my day, we would the university photocopied the 25 pages, put them in the lab, um, and we read, read it through, and that was the language that we were using. Um, the ISO standard by, by, uh, for modular two is um, 705 pages of A4. You know, uh, of, of you know, obviously it doesn't matter, but it's double backed, and it, comes, it weighs in about two inches thick. 
Um, and of course, there's VDM specification and also English annotation. So I mean, it's great. It's fantastic from the compiler's perspective, but you wouldn't want to give that to an undergrad. Um, it would put the fear of God into them, really. Anyway, so a um, bit, bit of history. Um, PIM support, PIM 234, was finished in 2006. The ISO language uh, and uh, the libraries were, were completed in 2010. It has a regression test suite. So there's 1,670 individual tests. They, those are run multiple times with, with different options. So 03 and various, various uh, uh, combinations of options as well. 03, um, OOS, et cetera. Uh, 02, 01, 00 minus G, and, and a few others as well. Um, and um, yeah, it, 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 I think it passes, uh, well four point, the graph from 4.7.4 passes all apart from uh, six. And, and those actually are, uh, truly aren't really regression tests. Those tests are for f uh, features that don't exist. Like it, I think it's trying to detect um, integer overflow, which, it, which the compiler doesn't do uh, currently. The front end doesn't do. So the uh, development started in, in 1999 um, after I received an, an email from RMS. It goes back a bit further than that, really. But in the, I was an undergrad at Reading University. And, and uh, as part of my PhD, I wrote a module two compiler to a, for a simulator. Anyway, I, I then went to industry, came back out of industry, uh, went into academia again, and um, I can remember certainly a, a reading, reading through um, a, a very early version, 1.32 uh, release of GCC in the machine room when, when I was backing up these tapes, these, these one-inch mag tapes, as I had to do as a, as a, um, a, a lab technician. And uh, I remember reading this, thought this would make a great Module 2 compiler if, if only one put a front end onto it. Well, I was young and I didn't really know C uh, well enough to do that in uh, those days. Was, this was back in 89, I think, 88, 89 time. And so uh, I, um, anyway, I went back into, um, I wrote the, the Module 2 compiler, uh, the, the, the one from my PhD, um, which was called um, M2F, now called x86M2. And in, in 92, um, it was a complete modular two, no C at all. Went to industry, learned C uh, heavily, came back out and did, did, did some minor um, contributions to bin utils and uh, GDB, I think. And, um, and then, um, and basically, uh, received this, well, I, one, I contacted Ken Rayburn, I think, it was, a, it was a couple of patches. And he I mentioned that I was using modular two to generate the, the abstract code for this machine I was introducing to bin utils. Ken Rayburn then CC'd RMS saying that there's a, there's a module two compiler which is GPL compliant. And RMS then said, would you consider putting it onto the front of GCC? So I, so that was, that I, I bit the bullet and did it. And I was, I was absolutely hooked um, for after that. Anyway, the M2F um, or x86M2 had a minus students option which did, did lots of um, semantic code checking. Um, that's one of, its, uh, one of its features. It also had a, a Pentium pipeline code generator um, and it did quite, quite good. But, uh, the, quite well, but the trouble was I, was I was playing catch up for GCC and I spent six months doing this Pentium code generator. I thought this is okay. And then, then the next version of GCC comes around and just destroys me. And I thought, like, well, I can't keep doing this. You know, I, I, I haven't got the, the years ahead of me to do this. So, so uh, it, it really did, the pincer movement hit when RMS said, you know, what about you using it for GCC? That's the wrong truth. I thought, yes. Then I would never have to worry about backends um, on code generation again. And it was, it was fantastic, really. So. Um, yeah, the current release is 4.7.4, which, uh, which graphs onto um, GM2 1.1.5. You can download that from the website. And, 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 and it builds about 10 minutes on a 4 gigahertz uh, Athlon um, black AMD machine at home. Um, the current development is, is uh, I'm focused on um, GC 5.2 or, or 5.3, but 5.2 is actually the, the directory, that, uh, the, the, the uh, subdirectory in which I'm working on. And uh, in the last six, nine months, I've um, been working extensively, really, on the bootstrap mechanism, which has changed. Obviously, the, the GCC now compiles optionally with uh, G++, doesn't it? And that, that caused me a little bit of a headache, because uh, th th I was using a bootstrap mechanism called P2C, written by um, Dave Gillespie, I think. It's an awesome bit of software when he wrote it, I mean, 1991. I've used it for about 24 years, which I modified it to, 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 do, to do modular 2 to C. And then it uses that as the bootstrap mechanism, then it compiles itself and links itself with, with GCC. Um, but th then the, the trouble with PTC, it's, it's difficult to maintain. It was written in the style of 1991, st stylistic changes have taken place. 
I, I was forced in, into looking at, uh, I've I, I maintained it for, for Modular 2 for the last 24 years, really. But, but when, when, soon as the G, when it, soon as it wants to compile, GC wants to compile it with G++, I was getting loads of problems with the expressions and uh, expression uh, violations, etc. So I, I could spend time rewriting P expert.sp, which is a massive file, it's about a fifth of P to C, or I, I, th I thought I could rewrite it compl from scratch and, and come up with a, a tool called MC, module two to C, which will borrow the, the parser uh, and uh, lots of code from, from GNU module two and, and, and re-implement the bootstrap mechanism. So I did that. I thought foolishly, um, as, a, as a, a, a typical British uh, axiom, that it would all be over by Christmas. This was in last November. And, and of course, it, you know, I, I finished it last week, though. But, it, but, it's, uh, but nevertheless, uh, timing is, is difficult to, well, I find it imp almost impossible to estimate how long t code takes to write. But it's, it's done. Bar modulo bugs, um, it, it's, it's there, and it compiles itself, and it GCC compiles it, and it builds, et cetera. Um, yeah, so, th well, well that, that every cloud has a silver lining, really, because the implementing MC was, uh, was, was quite revolution, well, quite, quite, quite a, I guess, li a light bulb went on in my head, really, that, that at that point, that suddenly I could um, maybe, maybe sh take some of the code from MC back into GM2 as I was rewriting. MC gave me the opportunity to really to, to, take, to have a blank sheet of paper and write the, the, a module to C, C translator from scratch, um, and now I can, I can take some of that code and um, take it back to GM2 and clean up the code base of GM2 as well. So there is, there is, I think, a huge amount of mileage going to be gained from this. Not, not least the debugging. It's, it's much easier to debug the outputs of MC. MC produces GNU compliant C code as well, so it's formatted, you know, kind of how, how our, our eyes are accustomed to looking at C, which much just makes thing, things leap to life and easier to write, to, write, to read and write. Anyway, so um, one of my observations really is, is that it, in my mental world of, of, of maintaining a front end, whenever a change happens in GCC, uh, basically, you, you, you guys don't need to worry about it. I mean, if you change GCC, from, from my perspective, that's good because normally it, 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 it makes me write better code and, and, and I have to go back and revisit bits of code that's normally fairly ugly. For example, when the options system, options was uh, changed about, well, I'm guessing, five, six, seven years ago with, with uh, uh, all that stuff around about then, that then that suddenly that, that, that broke everything in, in the front end, obviously, but it didn't take that long to fix. But, but once, it, once it was fixed, suddenly the code transformed, it was that much cleaner. The, the move from obstacles, I'm showing my age now, um, also when that disappeared, that, that, that also changed, and, and the binding, all the binding technology, um, binding, is it, I can't remember the, 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 the struct now, the binding struct, whatever it is, binding level, is that right? Um, get, I'm getting confused anyway, but there, there, was, there was a binding um, aspect that changed as well, and that, that, that also um, cleaned up the code. Um, so that I'm, I'm I kind of like change in some respects, um, and even the, the move to G++, G++ um, is going to change and improve code. Um, features, what does Module 2 or GM2 have? Um, well, it, it supports all the dialects that are known that, that currently, the PIM2, PIM3, PIM4, and, and ISO libraries, plus various libraries. We have uh, uh, Logitech compatibility libraries, um, University of Ulm libraries, I didn't write, but they were, they were GPL'd, so they, they just slotted in nicely, and it, it'll compile and link with, with University of Ulm libraries. Um, and we have uh, um, ISO and uh, other compat PIM compatibility libraries. It has another, I guess, a few features, um, a few extensions. The ASM is exactly the same syntax as C, C++. It's just capital letters, that's all. Um, and other than that, it behaves and looks identical to the C. Um, and it uses, the, it, you can run the C preprocessor um, using, w w internally, you, you pass an option minus C, uh, minus F, CPP, and it runs the C preprocessor, and it runs the C preprocessor using minus lang asm, minus traditional CPP, as you can see. And I think, I believe that Fortran does the same, is that right? Anybody to, anybody to, uh, capital F files, I think, are preprocessed. Well, they, they are, they are preprocessed. Mm. Okay, so, so does it... It's not the C preprocessor that they use for that. Oh, okay. Oh, right. I don't know if they're preprocessable properly for that way. Yeah. Okay. Does, does modular have... have no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah. No, so, so it kind of makes sense to uh, yeah, utilize that. that. Yeah, and it, it's quite nice, really, to be able to do that, and you can do some fancy things, obviously. 
in module two. Um, it also has um, a language f uh, access to <laughs> extensions to allow access to C libraries, obviously. Um, and this, this, um, so we have definition module for C here, and um, yeah, so we can do printf, and 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 with a format uh, argument. And obviously, the, the array of char here is passed across to the C libraries as char star. And, and it accepts var args, which are promoted in this exactly the same way as it would if it was calling C. Um, and and uh, yes, yeah, so array of type is mapped onto type star. Yeah, so the, here is the example, pedagogical example. You wouldn't really want to do this, of course, but this is just a simply so simple that that, uh, that but, but but you know it, it, it makes for a nice little example in the in the manual. Um, so this this here we're adding i and j, returning k, and we're using we're going to on a 32-bit. Um, Intel-based machine, then this is this is what we do. And it's a, the, the syntax hopefully is identical. If not, is a bug, but it should it should be identical to the the C syntax. Yeah. So and, and there's access to built-ins as well. All the built-ins, as far as I'm aware. I, I do when I when I'm composing this slide, I do wonder whether that that tan is tan now a built-in from C uh, in GCC, or is it not? I was expecting someone to. I was expecting someone from the floor to say, ah, oh, TAN's now a built-in or something. So <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. But, but it, it, it wasn't when I wrote, when I wrote, when this module was produced, but it, it could, I suppose it could be now. Anyway, so, so yeah, it, what it's saying is that it will use the built-in for... We had sine and cosine as a built-in so that, that, that you can express the export, the, 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 uh, the complex exponentiation as, as that. And so there was, was a reason to actually create built-in sine and cosine. Right. And never I mean, you can obviously just this divide sine no sine by cos, couldn't you? Right. Right. Yeah, we could just. Added, sure yes. Yeah, and we could just divide sine by cos, couldn't we? But it's uh, the the uh, yeah. So th they will choose to use built-ins if possible if they exist on the architecture. Um, but if they're not, then it, then it falls back to the implementation module, which will um, look up the equivalent from a a, a C built-in replacement module. That's called C built-ins. Here, this is built in dot sqrt for the square root um, function, and it, and it just calls that in in, in turn. Yeah. So it, it, we um, in, enhance a number of set uh, um, a number of language features. So sets can be declared from any ordinal type, um, and rather than not limited to 32 elements, and you could and you could you could you could have set of uh, set of cardinal if you wanted to. I mean, obviously, if if you had uh, well, you probably do have uh, easily. Four um, billion bits available um, at a one at a time, maybe. But uh, yeah, anyway. So you can do that if you really want to do that. Um, and, and abstract data types can, are not restricted to a single to a point of type. So that you could have an abstract data type which is an enumerated type, or, or or just a record if you really wanted to do that. So there's a bit of an extension there. Um, and the other nice thing is that with with abstract data types, you can choose to compile it so that it so that the, with the compiler will then go and look at the implementation module. Remember from maybe from your student days when you used a mo module two, if you used an abstract data type, it, it would it would pick it up in the definition module, but in, in 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 C terms, it would think of it as a void star, and then internally it would cast it to to whatever. You never get the debugging info inside the inside the impl implementation module. With GNU module two, you can have an option which says extended o opaque, so it reads the definition module, sees it's an opaque, and then goes and tries to find the def the implementation module if it if it exists, and if it does, then it'll 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 expand the data structure so that you uh, internally in the symbol table so that when you when it spit, spits out the debug information it's appointed to a record with all the variant fields and uh, various fields and you can print them off um, and debug through the ver um, skip over the, um, the the opaque type. Yeah, I mean that also allows types, variables, constants to be declared in any order. Um, technically, that's not a language extension. Um, but but module two, uh, GNU module two doesn't need a forward declaration. So, so in 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 stand in ISO module module two, you you can have um, a forward declaration if you really wanted to. But you don't in, in GNU module two, you don't have to use them. You can you can, you can de declare things completely out of sequence, and the compiler will will handle that. Uh, that that does cause raise a few eyebrows really, if you because you can have local modules and you can export items from local modules if you if you declare. An, um, it gets rather a little bit convoluted with an, an enumerated type. Supposing you defined a color in, an, in a local module as red, red, green, blue, and exported that um, you could in, into the global space of the implementation module, you can, uh, you can, you can further export it from the definition module. Um, and 
and, 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 and if you import colors from another module, then you see red, green, and blue in your, in your space. So it does take, a, it, it, you have to think these things through a, a bit carefully when, when implementing Modular 2 because of the, because of the, uh, the inter interrelated nature of these issues. Um, anyway, the other uh, nice thing about it, Modular 2, it, has, it is SWIG compatible. Um, and you can, an uh, uh, option called minus SWIG here, which uh, generates an interface file for a module. And um, you can, with, with a couple of um, commands, command lines, you, you can generate a Python module from Modular 2, and then you can just call, um, f from Python, you can call your mo module, and it, it'll w just work. For example, string library, um, I was able to uh, compile it with, with SWIG, then have a bit of Python, um, which, would, which we, you could then test out the, the string module by passing arrays of characters into it, getting, doing strict concat, and it returns you the concatted string, et cetera. And then the SWIG, the, the uh, Command line minus swig here looks at the um, looks at the procedure parameters, and it attempts to work out the input output parameters. It looks at the first basic block and, see, and looks at and looks for every parameter. And if it's if they're written to, then it thinks that that's an output parameter. If they're, if they're not read, if they're only read from, it's, it thinks it's an input parameter, um, and, and, it, and it makes a first guess at that. And obviously, the guess could be wrong, but at least it might, with a minus swig, you get a module dot name dot i. And then it's a good good place to start with, and, you can, and it, most of the time, if you get it right, and if it, if it isn't, then you just change it, and then you just carry on with using Swig after that, um, and it's done maybe 95% of the work. Um, yeah, yeah, the uh, GNU module two, you can you can throw an exception in Python, you can catch it. In, you, sorry, you can, you can throw an exception in module two. Beg your pardon. You can catch it in Python or another scripting language. That that's quite good, um, and um, yeah, it seems to work reasonably solidly. Yeah, likewise, um, C++ can throw, you can you can link together C++ module wi with a with a, mo with a module two module, and uh, if C++ throws an exception, then module two can catch it, and module two can throw exceptions ex as well. LibTool is supported, and it's used to build the shared library, so that it does the multi-arch build. So if you build if you cross build a cross compiler for the AVR, it'll go through using LibTool to build all the different um, variants of of the of the architectures. And here's an example of uh, building a, a physics library, um, phys a, a physics engine library um, for Python. And it is, this is in, in the examples uh, directory in the GCC GM2 uh, examples PG, make part of in. And so here, here, this is the build sequence for um, PGEIF. At the end here, you see we end up with uh, PGEIF, if I use this. No. Uh -huh. There we go. Excellent. Uh, that, so there we are. And uh, so the underscore PGEIF means that if you, if you put set Python to you, if you put a Python's um, module uh, path to this current directory, then you could do import PGEIF, and it'll just import it. And that, that, at that point, you're cooking on gas. You can you can just do dir PGEIF, and it'll display the methods that are accessible, and you can call them with the various arguments, etc. The data type corresponds with C++. C++. Yep, uh, GNU module two has um, a num a ve these data types: the the integer, obviously long int, the short int, cardinal long int, etc. All these down here. The, the ISO says that uh, it should implement. You should implement I integer and long int and and uh, cardinal long card. Uh, but GNU module two also supports the short card versions uh, and short ints and. Um, that there's a mapping uh, as, as follows. This, this w used to be a little bit contentious. It's less, less contentious as time goes on, really. Um, the, the, I guess the contentious bit might be that reels are double, and uh, short reels float, and long reels are long doubles. But that's, 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 that was contentious about 10 years ago. It's, it's less, less so now as machines have got faster and bigger. And uh, the ASM. Is supported. We've already been through that bit. Um, so embedded system support. There is a, a, a number of libraries. The one that I haven't mentioned is the minimum library, which, as it said, as its name suggests, does almost nothing. Uh, but um, is it used to be a guy that used to come you hear um, fairly regularly from Atmel, Eric Red Weddington. So I think it'd be, he'd be, he would be. Uh, this, this, this slide, I guess, is dedicated to him. Is in his absence. That he maybe, maybe he, he would be happy to see that there were zero bytes and zero BSS bytes used in with, the, the, with this embedded system. 
Yeah, so the, uh, every byte mattered, didn't it? On, doesn't on, on an embedded system. So, so, so it's minimal. It, all this, pro this program did was simply flash an LED on and off. But you, as you can see, uh, um, zero bytes there used uh, for the data. Um, well, so okay, so the embedded system support, uh, you, can, you can request the initialization list. How does it boot up? It, it could, obviously, it, it creates a scaffold, which is, uh, which is main. That, that main program is either C or C++. In an embedded system, it's probably C. And then, then calls um, the, the, the de uses a dependency graph to call each, um, each initialization function at every module in turn. And it does the reverse when, when the module shut down. If, if you don't, you, you use the, um, the compiler to generate that list for, um, with, with an option. And then you, it's, a, it's an ASCII list. You can change the ASCII list if you don't like the order uh, for, for whatever reason. And you can even append the list if you really wanted to override certain modules on the command line, saying you want you know, module A to occur before module B to occur, to, to initialize before module C and D, E, et cetera, and you can force the, the initialization. So it's all the standard stuff, really, but, but you, it's, it, the command line um, allows those, those kind of that flexibility. Um, implementing unbounded arrays um, using trees, well, it, it, module two has unbounded arrays, how they're implemented. They're implemented simply by having a, a, a record structure, as you can see here, which has, um, yeah, which one is this thing again? This red one is not. Yeah, the, the uh, um, has a record with, with the, the first element of the record is, oops, is a, is, is a pointer to the type, and the second is the high. So that, uh, so if you do high of A, it obviously get, accesses the second field and gives you the cardinal value. Yeah, and so um, thankfully, uh, the code in, in, the, in the front end can be fairly clean and high level. I mean, I was just able to use the built-ins, and that's, that's all, all credit to um, GCC and the effort that you, you, you guys do. Um, I, I'm just, I just call allocate mem copy, um, and, uh, it, which seemingly looks very expensive. Of course, it's not because of all the optimization that goes on down the bottom. So it just allocates um, a space for a new, the new array. Does, copies the old array into the new array, assigns the new pointer of the new array into the, um, into the, into the pointer field here, and we've got ourselves a copy, haven't we? And, and, that, that, and that's done. And then that, that it goes through and it produces pretty good code, as you'd expect. So the, the GNU Modular 2, it's, um, it's written in, in C and Modular 2, uses flex for the, for the, uh, for the lexical analysis. It uses a six, it's a six-pass compiler. Um, really because of all the issues about scoping and, um, and enumerated types out of order declaration. Uh, the, the ISO um, module two also introduced aggregate constants, which caused a bit of a, b bit of a headache. Um, so that had to be implemented, I implemented that using another pass. It, on, it, I'm, I guess I wince when I, th when I, th when I think, look at it as a six pass compiler. I mean, the, the, the tradition in the, certainly in the 80s and 90s was, was to use a single pass compi compilation, wasn't it? But actually the, 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 the um, the, the time it takes to run through a pass is almost no time at all. It's, just, it, it, it's blisteringly quick. Um, so so at, it seems to me, s with hindsight, um, to be uh, quite, quite, quite a reasonable thing to do. I mean, it's, it's more by accident than by design. I, I, was, I was thinking that it, was going to, it would be very, very slow. It, it isn't. Um, the, 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 really Sorry, say again? Yes, that's true. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, and, we, and the, the ju it just uh, lex the lexical analysis just crunches the tokens into integers and puts them into an array and just reads that array over and over again. And, then, and obviously, the parser is a top-down recursive descent, which is blisteringly quick, isn't it? Really, um, in, 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 into the, with today's machines. Yeah. So um, each each uh, front end module two sim. A symbol table entry is translated into trees. It uses double entry bookkeeping. This, this, this uh, again, maybe one might wince about that, th that design decision because there's double the data. But actually, it, it, it makes it very easy to debug. You know, the, the, I was able to look at the, the front end symbol table, make sure that's absolutely perfect before I push it across to GCC. Uh, and uh, that gives me a, a huge amount of confidence that GCC is going to do the right thing. And also, I don't have to worry about what happens if I give a malformed tree to GCC. You don't, I don't ever give it nicely neat. In, in my mind's eye, I'm thinking of creating C code all the time in, in, in trees, just passing C, tr C code to, to GCC, and then, then suddenly this, this beautiful um, tight assembly language comes out of the back end. 
Yeah, we, so we, we have a compiler options. I'm going to bore you now with, uh, with a list of all 45. No, I kid, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, the, the, a choice selection of uh, compiler options here, um, and we won't go through them all. Um, the, it, we do have w, stu uh, w students, warning for students, checks for programming style. This, this would be um, aggressively um, pedantic about programming style. Obviously, for, for, mature, for, for mature programmers, they wouldn't want to, you wouldn't go anywhere near this. What it detects is, is students using um, variables that look like keywords, maybe using um, upper and lowest case, same name variables in the same scope. You, obviously, in industri industry, you might want to do that. But it, for, for we're talking first year programmers and, and who shouldn't be doing little, little tricks like that. So um, we, we that throw it in because it, 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 we inherited it with, uh, with uh, M2F. Mine's pedantic. It checks nested uh, with statements re referring to the same record. That's legal in module two, but it's just downright dangerous. Um, it also d um, checks whether somebody uses a for loop indice outside the for loop without it being reset. Um, pedantic par param names, so we, we, can, we, we can look at the uh, definition module, make sure that the parameter names match the implementation counterparts. Again, so you don't have to do that in strict module two, but it's, it, 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 a number of times I've been burnt by that. I thought it was an easy one to put in, so I would introduce it. Extended opaque, I've been through that one before. Soft check all. So there's quite a, quite a bit of range checking going on and runtime checking and just turns all, it all on. So it's going to detect nil pointer violations, um, sub range, out of sub range uh, error, um, index out of range, array bounds. If you access outs of those, it'll catch all of those, including dynamic arrays. So that's quite nice for, for, for first year programmers. Whole div, I um, forget what that does now. Um, I d probably division by zero, big one, probably division by zero, modulus by zero. F case is the, uh, an else, a, a case statement without a default in it in module two, or without an else statement in module two, and a function that has no return statement in it is also caught at runtime. And these are very, very trivial things, aren't they? But, but nonetheless, it has all those. The thing it doesn't have, though, is, is integer overflow. And I just wonder whether, it, whether that's been done in, in the GCC um, at all, in, in like in C. <laughs> so, so if you if you add if you add two ints together, would it detect that they, they wrap around? Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Right, so in the future, five. five or so, so we're talking six or seven? Yeah, yeah okay, so that's good, that's great news. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, yes. Um, no exceptions for, 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 for um, uh, implementing embedded systems, so you can compile code, it guarantees no exception handlers are ever, ever generated, um, and, and also the libraries aren't, just does not link with, with exception handle libraries. Um, so yeah, for, for embedded systems. And we've also got the, the, the classic four um, dialects of Modular 2. Um, credit to um, David Echelon. Um, for, for, um, in when I met him in Cambridge uh, last GCC Cauldron, he, he, I, he asked me a question. I gave him a really rubbish answer, actually. He said, what am I going to do in the summer? I had six weeks um, holiday. And uh, what am I going to do in terms of GNU Modular 2? I think I said that I would implement a fixed, fixed format um, access to fixed format arithmetic in, in module two. But I went back to the hotel room and thought that was a pretty, pretty rubbish answer, actually. I could, could, I mean, could, do, could do much better than that. I mean, not that, 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 that it's not useful. It is useful, but, but maybe that in six, with a six weeks time off, that there was, I, could, I could use the time more productively. So, so I thought, well, why, why not um, implement global um, whole program optimization? I mean, it's actually, and, and uh, actually, with the hindsight, that should have been done years ago. The effort, it, it only took, took three weeks out of the six to do. And, uh, and on the ARM V7L, I think it was, architecture, um, with, with, the, with the physics engine, I saw a 60% improvement um, with, with that. So I mean, there's obviously just a, a weird data point. I'm not, you don't, I didn't see the same with, um, with alas, with um, an Optron machine, or uh, sorry, an Athlon machine running the same code. But with, with an ARM V7L, 60% improvement, which for three weeks' work was, uh, was, 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 was a great. <laughs> It was a great deal, really. Um, 
Okay, so here we are. This, this is the same, this is, um, no, no, so this, is, this is a maze generator generated with minus 0.3 um, in module two, um, which I wrote years ago. Um, I, I, was, I should have been writing up my PhD and I, I didn't. Um, and uh, back in the summer of 88, and I just sort of ended up spending four or five weeks writing a maze generator, inside, which seemed a lot more interesting than writing up a, a, a PhD. But anyway, there we are. So this is, uh, th th it took 30 minutes on an IBM PC, um, 4.77 megahertz, I think. And now it takes, what, 2.5 seconds um, on a 4, four gigahertz um, Athlon. But uh, anyway, so um, with minus 0.3, uh, 2.5 seconds, as you can see. Uh, with minus whole program, 1.45. So 44% reduction in user time. And then um, physics game engine. Uh, sadly, I, I lost the, the results on the, on the arm, which is, I really kicked myself for that. But it was, I do remember it was... Um, 60% improvement. Um, I compiled it again the other day with on the on the on the um, Athlon, and um, here we get yeah we we, we see it's a 14% reduction in real time. Um, not not as good. I think it was probably the cache it was it was dealing with, and it, uh, the smaller cache it was able to optimize better on the on the on the uh, on the arm machine. Also, it, it got rid of a lot of the getters and setters. Um, I remember looking at the, out, the gprof output, um, and it, all the getters and setters had just disappeared, of course, with, and, and, and it was just you know, accessing, accessing, I guess, those data bytes um, and those, those words and just assigning the variables directly without calling the function. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it was, it was huge. Um, um, in terms of the effort required for me, which was fairly minimal, the payback was si significant. Um, so, for immediate future, um, graphed. Um, module two on, onto onto GCC uh, 5.2.0. That, that's ongoing. I finished the the MC translator. That that, that should hopefully um, push off pretty quickly now. Um, and I, I just track trunk. I am tracking trunk. Though though the last time I tracked it was Easter. I confess. So, and so um, but but uh, I, I'd like to obviously push it up to trunk. Um, GCC 5.3 is is fairly straightforward. I think the, the difference between the two. From the front, for, from the front end perspective, is is fairly minimal, almost negligible, uh, but it's certainly stable with with 4.7.4, and you can download and build that if you really, really wanted to. Yeah, future um, future work: implement f whole value, detect integer overflow at runtime. It's certainly possible to do, isn't it? But you, one could have little wrappers. Um, I might just wait for, for GCC 7.0 uh, 7, 7 to to use and use yours. Um, but if you didn't do that, it, one would, it would be possible to write wrappers for it. It was just a lot of work, and I, I, there are other more pressing things to do. What is interesting is that um, uh, I've been in contact with Benjamin. Um, uh, I, I can't forget his I forget, I forget his surname, um, and but um, and uh, Benjamin Karaski, I think, and uh, and also Rick, Rick Sutcliffe, who's who's the maintainer for Comp Lang Modular Two, and they they've um, they, they've been authorized by well they've got permission from Niklas Wirth to to try to standardize Modular Two re release ten, which is the 2010 release of Modular Two. They, they've been going through um, Modular Two and, and tried to s pare out some of the I guess the, the the dead wood from the language and and replace it with new modern features, basically doing language update. And that, that's that's quite interesting. Um, that basic, in a nutshell, um, it has uh, templates and, and de definition modules with types uh, in, in the, as, a, as a parameter templates. And also, it's got rid of variant records, and it has extensible records. So so uh, and so you can you can implement your own inheritance if you wanted to that way. Um, also, and it, and it's cleaned up the I/O. So there's a lot of interesting things. I've probably missed a few a whole. UTF-8 as well, um, and, and there's a whole host of other things I've probably missed off as well. But but it's it's an interesting aspect, and uh, that the Benjamin's working on the LLVM port of uh, M2R10, and, and I said I'd do the uh, the GCC one, so that we cuts work for the future. It, it hasn't yet been standardised. He, he is they they are Rick, Rick and Benjamin are trying to push it through BSI, um, ISO and do all the right kind of things by f pushing it through the standardization committees. Um, but the, yeah, it's, it's interesting work. Um, and anyway, we'll see what comes of it. it I, I'm briefly, I, I nearly finished now. Um, the, the Model 2 um, code comparison. So here we have, uh, I simply did a, 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 a WC minus L because it, 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 it's, it's rather contentious to say how big is the Fortran front end, et cetera, comparing all these things, because there's obviously all the libraries which I wasn't are not necessarily 
au fait with, and it might be maligning it terribly. So I'm simply doing an, a WC minus L. You can see here that um, the, the section of the Fortran compiler, let's put it that way, is, is 155k um, lines, um, and mo module 2 is roughly what, 157k, with well, a, bit, a bit more than that one, maybe 180k, if you include the C files as well. Um, but of course, obviously, that, that's all the libraries and the compiler for, for module 2, the whole shooting match. Uh, there's no Fortran libraries there, I, I suspect. It's all, that's in lib, um, lib Fortran, maybe, or lib F77, or whatever it is. OK, and ADA is, uh, is vast, isn't it, by comparison? So conclusions and acknowledgments. Double entry bookkeeping, pragmatic. It works quite well. Um, it, it's, it allows me to debug um, for the, the front end in isolation. I only pass proper trees, well-formed trees, into GCC. Whole program op optimization for anybody doing a, a language front end shouldn't be thought of as an afterthought. It, it's, it's so easy to do. GCC does such a great job. Um, you know, just do it. it it's, uh, I, I really kicked myself for not doing it years ago. Um, and also a, th a huge thanks to all you guys um, for the great architectural coverage and, and the code generation and the, the GM2 users for all their feedback. Um, uh, which I wouldn't be able to do what I did now with it, really, without them. Um, I, I remember I almost gave up writing test code about 2006, because ob obviously we all write little, uh, I guess, subsets of languages, don't we? And, uh, and the subset of module two that I was used to c creating, the language just the, the compiler would just handle. And I, I was unable to break it. So when you, I guess you find the same, that, that uh, maybe we, we all end up using a slight subset or an, or a, and a kind of... Uh, almost our own little templates of code. Um, and uh, obviously, I required users to come back to me and say, no, it doesn't work. I've got this ancient code. And you think, we well, shouldn't be doing that. That can't possibly be legal module two. And indeed, it was. So um, thanks for all the bugs. That's uh, been really useful. Any questions? That's it, uh, yeah, and, and, pa it and, 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 and pass it down to Gimple and, yeah. and just says do it, yes, yeah. yeah. Yes? It has a huge impact on compiler time. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, so that, 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 that if, you were, if you're a developer, that would be that would be a worry. I mean, it, to, to build, say, the, the 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 physics game engine uh, on my on my four gigahertz um, AMD machine at home, eight core machine. I'm only, only using one core for compiling, but it'll it'll um, what would it, it would take? Probably, be, um, I didn't time it, but I'm, I'm fingers finger in the air. I would think about two minutes to to compile, a, and without it, without the whole optimization, it would be, it would be like. 10, 15 seconds, probably. I haven't tried LTO. To be, I need to do that, especially after this morning's talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so something to look forward to when maybe when I get to five two, or maybe or yeah, a bit bit later than that. Yeah. Any any other questions? Yes. I, I'm not sure. Um, they might be. I, the, the they're not. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Yes, they, they were. Yes, I don't know wh why they why they didn't. Um, yeah, I have to ask them. It, it could be. It, it, I'm guessing it could be licensing, or I, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't, yeah, I don't know actually. Yes. Yeah, the the, the could Yes, yes, yeah, it could be. It could be a lot of politics, but I, I don't know. I have to I have to ask Benjamin. Yeah, we're on, we're on very good terms. <laughs> yeah, any, any other questions? Yes. One, the usual one. Uh, so do you, do you plan, I keep forgetting the answer to that, so do, yeah. you, do you plan uh, ever including it in, in general in, in GCC yeah. repositories, or do you plan to continue just maintaining it on I would like to. I, 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 I'd like to uh, get it into the, into the tree. I, I, I've got rid of Java, so <laughs> 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 so Say again, Ian? <laughs> 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 it, 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 
Okay, excellent. Yeah, I'd love to. Love to get in the, in the tree. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I, have, I have submitted occasional occasional patch to Joseph, and uh, I think, that, fair enough, he, he, he declined them. I mean, I can understand his reasons, and so uh, I'll go back and p polish the patches up. I've got patches for to do with the, some some of the linking, I think, the the, the, the compiler driver, the, the G GCC driver, and and the the, the, the lang specs dot h, I think all those things to do with that. Um, which which yeah, actually, right, that, that, that's a follow-up question. How, how large are the changes for the non-modular part of GCC that you need to make? Well, the language specs is, is I need I need a couple of extra f um, uh, queries really, and 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 to say only link. I think I need an option to call only link. Yeah. Um, and but other than that, uh, there is there is only a, one other aspect which I need uh, to to ask to be patched into GCC, and that is the ability to start an array. And, uh, and start build array, end build array. I think, when certainly in the four seven and before that, it was just you had just have a function called build array, but I, I need to be able to start it and then end it because I have I can have an array which is uh, maybe an array of pointers which are pointers to the array itself, and it's, uh, it's so cyclical. Yes. So maybe the cookie based array constructor. So start yeah. array, then you get something back from input. And yes. Then you can say and add this to the array, add this and that. And that, that that's right. I mean, if I, that that's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so it's actually not. I mean, the patch is quite easy to do because I think that the start build array, sorry, the build array almost, almost has a start build and end build. It's pretty obvious how to break that function in two. But I need to break it in two, and, uh, and then and then better call it, you know, once the beginning, once the end, really. Should be should be fairly. Yes. Yeah. And other than that, I, I, there, there are. I think I've got t about twelve patches. I can't remember the other details of the others, but they're fairly incidental as as far as I can recall. Yeah. Anything else? Well, yeah, thank you for your time. <laughs>